Hello everyone, my name is Sonny Cooker and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to do the second part of the to-do app and we're going to create a context. So uh, context you could see um, as an alternative to Redux. Uh, it's more like it, it's, uh, it's a way of managing data that we can access through the entire React app basically. So instead of passing down props, passing down props, passing down props, it's better to just use a context. So that's what we're going to create today. So first of all, uh, we have to go through our app.js uh, here. And uh, or actually, first of all, go through our uh, terminal and open up the Symfony server again. So Symfony server start. I've restarted my code application, so I need to redo this. If you're still following along from the previous one, then you don't have to go through this. Uh, so let me just quickly do this yarn and core dev double dash watch oops there we go and the symphony server setting up and then we can open it up in the browser and uh let's see is it still loading yes it is still loading because we can still see this console message of app.js so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to create we're going to turn this into a class component this app.js we're going to turn this into a class component so um in PHP Storm, there is a live template, they're called, uh, and there's multiple of them. If we go through here to the editor, and then, uh, or actually, let me search here, just live template, live templates right here, uh, under the editor, and then under, yeah, under the editor. And in here, we can find things like React, and here are all sorts of things that you can start typing in order to create uh, certain things. So one of the ones that we're going to be using is RCC. Creates a React component, a React class component with the ES6 module system. So uh, RCC, basically, for short. And that creates a basic React component for us. So let's go and do that. So let's see here. RCC, enter, and there we go. So that creates this. Import React from React. This is your basic React setup uh, class. It takes it from the file name and all that stuff, and it's gonna take care of that for us. So what we need to do now is to actually render this. So let's just go and say uh, hello, for example. You'll notice it doesn't render at all. Uh, and it also turned back to white because we're not importing the CSS anymore. Well, the reason that this does not work is because it's not rendering into the ID, the, the, the root ID that we gave it. So in order to do that, we need to import React DOM. So import React DOM in capital letters, from React DOM. You'll get a suggestion there, and that's where you want to import that from. Then at the bottom, we're not going to export, but instead we're going to do React DOM dot render, and then you give it the component you want to render. So we're going to, it's going to be called app in this case, uh, comma, and then document that ID or the, uh, dot get element by ID. Uh, you're pretty familiar with this already. Get element by ID, and then the one that we gave it, which is root. Okay. Now let's see if it works now, and there we go. It renders to that specific ID. So the one that we gave in the, in the template, which is right here, the, the div ID root, that's where everything is gonna be rendered into. And that's the component app in this case. So uh, first of all, what we wanna do now is create a context because we want to work with data. We're gonna create a to-do app, so we want to create uh, that specifically. So what we're gonna do is we got we're gonna create two folders. One is gonna be called components. Sorry, I misspelled that. Components, and we're gonna create a second folder which is gonna be called contexts. So in here we're gonna create a new file which is gonna be called to do context. Dot js in capital letters with each successive successive word being a uh, a capital letter as well. .js, you could also do JSX, I guess, um, if you want to do that. And do we want to add this to the git list? Yes, we do, or, or the, the, the git add, we want to add it to that. And uh, we're gonna create another class component, but we're gonna rename this something different. It's not gonna be called to do context specifically, but to do context uh, provider. To do context provider, uh, and in the top, and I'm just looking at how I used to do it, and that's export const to do context equals create context. 
that is a function. It doesn't recognize it right now, but if we alt enter, we get suggestions. If we hover over it, we also get suggestions. Let's see, missing import, create function uh, or more actions. And you'll see it insert import, or in my case, it's just alt enter and then insert import, create context from react. So that's right there. Uh, normally it would pick this up automatically. Um, for some reason on Windows, it doesn't, don't know why, but you will have to do alt enter and call those things. So const to do context, export that and that will be that. So then in the other, then in the other methods here, we want to create a construct. So we're going to create a construct. So let's see con, if we say con on its own, it's going to create that. And then EST, which is going to create the uh, empty state object. So which is going to be this dot state equals and then an object. Uh, and inside there, we want to set what we want to set. So to do's, of course, so to do's and what is it? It's an empty array. It's an empty array for now. Uh, we're going to fill it up with stuff later. Um, and let's see, we're going to have a fetch method later. We're going to have a create method. We're going to have a uh, update. So we're going for the crud, you know, the or actually we're just gonna uh, remove or let's see crud, uh, create, uh, read. Oh, that's it. Read. So fetch is gonna be read in this case. So read, uh, create, read, cut, and d being delete. I want to keep this nice format because everyone knows what a crud is and keep it in like that in that format is going to be easy. So that's the methods that we're going to create later. Uh, first of all, we need to make sure that we can actually access this data uh, from within here. So in order to do that, we're going to the render method and we're going to return the to do context provider, but not like this, we need to say a dot. So dot provider. So to do context dot provider. Uh, and we're going to open that up. Oh, oops. Just gonna do that dot provider uh, like so. There we go. So that provider and it gets uh, well in the center here, we want to do props dot uh, children, which means that anything that is being passed uh, because we're going to wrap this context around our app. Basically, we're going to wrap it around our app. And by doing it this way, we will be able to access the context within any component that is within that context. So I'll, you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Um, and let's see, it's going to be this dot props dot children. Sorry, this dot props dot children. It's a class component. So you need to define this or use this. Um, and the provider also gets a prop, which is value. And you want to do two curly brackets right here. So it's going to be a value within JavaScript uh, brackets and then within that an obje object um, thing. And we want to include the state. And for that, we're going to use the spread operator. So we're going to do three dots and then the this dot state. And that is it. And then any other methods we could add later to this. So we can say, uh, well, I can create a couple methods here. Why not? So we're going to do a, a create to do method which is going to exist later. We're going to do a read to do method. Uh, we're going to do a update to do method. And finally, we're going to do a delete to do method. Simple as that. And then we can include these here. So I can say uh, create to do and then as an object say this the create to do and then we have to bind it to this so so um this is a little bit complicated to explain um uh, uh, you're gonna have to learn a little bit more about react in order to understand what bind is used for but bind makes sure that when i say this so when it's bound to this uh, or, or that if i were to call this uh, function it would actually go to this one, this particular one, and not one inside uh, that other class component. Uh, it's a little more difficult to explain and probably just explaining it a little bit wrong. I just know it works and don't ask too many questions. Um, but the ones that I can answer, <laughs> I will definitely answer. So create to do, uh, read to do, 
Although read to do is not actually necessary because that just picks up stuff in the construct later, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, update to do, yeah, sure. This dot update to do, uh, and again bind this, and I'll make sure to make it a little bit larger because you guys can probably read it terribly. And then finally, uh, delete to do is going to be this dot delete to do, and then dot bind this. Uh, and what we can do now is we can call that particular thing inside here. So we can uh, go in here and let's see, we're just gonna put it in here, why not? So we're just gonna call the uh, to do context. So to do context uh, provider, we're gonna call that here uh, and we're gonna open it up like this so that anything within here is gonna be able to use this. So anything within here and this is gonna be our app thingy, I mean, we could, Theoretically, also just put it in here, um, like around here, we could do that um, to make it somewhat easier, but I'm just gonna put it in here because uh, a little bit easier for us to read probably. So we have an app within there, the context provider, and within that, we're gonna put our to-do uh, table, which is what we're gonna create first. We're just gonna create a to-do table that just picks up stuff, deletes, edits stuff, that sort of stuff. So we're gonna create a to-do table, uh, which doesn't exist yet, um, but we can create it and again here in the components and we're just going to do to do table um, yeah, to do table is that what I want to call it or to do list or we're just going to call it to do that okay and dot js of course because it's a js component and then we are going to um, add that to the git list as well so uh, it's not a git list but the the, the, the git ignored would include it <clears throat> okay Class component, uh, no, this time I'm actually gonna use functional components and I'll go over why in a little bit later, but they're just a little bit nicer to work with sometimes, sometimes. Um, it depends whether or not you want it to contain the state and this is not gonna contain the state, it's gonna pull out of the state. So it doesn't need to be a class component. Plus I don't need access to lifecycle methods. Uh, lifecycle methods are what you get for these components. So. Uh, lifecycle methods such as, um, and I don't see why I'm not getting any of them, but things like component did mount, for example, which is a moment in the time of a React component in which it has rendered everything and it's done. And at that moment, if you want to trigger any specific JavaScript, you can. Um, so that's the point of that. Again, I don't know why I don't have access to those lifecycle methods on my auto completion, but whatever. So in here, we're gonna create our table. Now let's see how long is this video? It's about 13 minutes, so I'm gonna cut it right here. This is what's the uh, how you get the context going. And yeah, we're gonna import this table here as well. We import the table right here. And now we can use this. I'm just gonna do a div here that says hello, whatever. Uh, and let's see here, uh, go to our browser, go to the thing and it renders. Uh, and you know what, just to make sure that the context is working, uh, we're going to call the context right here. So how we do that is const context, uh, you can name this whatever, it's just a variable, equals use context. And again, I don't know why my auto completion is not picking it up, but insert import use context from React. There we go. And inside the parentheses, we want to put the uh, one that we want to use. So to do context right here, import to do context, use that right here. And now we have access to the context. Now there's a little bit of an issue here. Why is that? Uh, const context equals use context. Uh, hold on, what's going on here? Uh, oh, I put it in the wrong place. I put it outside the render. It's supposed to be inside the render. Um, if you want to use hooks, which is what this is called, use context, use state, those are called React hooks, and they can only be called inside the render method. Uh, but above the return. So that's where we want to put it. And uh, what we're just going to do now is I'm just going to put a div in here and I want to have access to context.todos because that's what that particular table was called. So let's go to our context again real quick. And inside the todos, we're now just going to add a, uh, let's call it, let's, let's add a object and that object is going to have a task. Uh, and the task is going to be uh, do something for now. 
just do something. I don't care what. Uh, we're going to add that and let's see what happens now when we render this. Okay, so nothing renders. And the reason is, is because, well, it's a array. We need to map through them, which we can. Uh, or actually, I'm doing this completely wrong. <laughs> it's supposed to be within curly brackets because JavaScript can be called within HTML inside curly brackets. So here, context.todos. Let's see what we get now. Uh, and we still get nothing. Okay, so in this case, because it's an array, we have to do dot map. Uh, and uh, for each to do, there is a to do uh, arrow function. Open that one up. And we're just going to create a div that contains um, the to do uh, dot task in this case. And I'm not getting it. Why am I not getting it? Oh, we're getting lots of errors. Invalid hook calls can only be called within the body of the function component. Uh, oh, oops, it's a class component again. Oops. <laughs> uh, convert to functional component. Predictate like so. Uh, parentheses, not curly brackets. Curly brackets if you want to do a function within a map. Uh, or uh, parentheses if you want to put other objects inside here. So in this case, it's going to be a div that's going to contain the object, which is to do dot task. And there we go, it renders. So you can map through this all you want. Like we can just add a bunch more objects, really. Uh, let's uh, open this one up a little bit more so we can see this easier. And I can do commas here and I can just keep adding extra stuff and it will just render it all out. That's how we access the data. So go over this and like experiment a little bit with this so you get to a little bit familiar with context because context is really important. Um, but this will allow us to access data. And this is where we're going to call this array is going to be filled with the to do's that we have in our list. Um, and this way it's going to be accessible. Uh, so we're all just going to have objects and all every to do is going to have a task. And later on, there may also have a category or whatever, but we can go over that at a later date. So task such as this, uh, or we can just give the to do a name a little bit easier. Uh, and uh, it just renders out like this. So now we have to change it to name and there we go. So it still renders perfectly fine. So that is context. That is how we get to render a component using React DOM down render to render the application component inside the root inside of the template. Uh, and uh, we have access to the context now. We have our to do table where we can build stuff into right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, now we can get cracking on creating the actual table itself. Uh, one thing more uh, that I completely forgot is that, well, we've created some stuff now. What we want to do now is uh, do git commit. Uh, so what we're just going to do is we're going to do alt K, is it? Alt control K, alt shift K, shift, uh, what is it? Uh, okay, we'll just say commit. Commit, uh, and let's see, we have ease inversion files. No, we want the to-do table to do context. So what we're going to call here is created a context and rendered the app onto the template. Something like that. We're going to commit this and then we're going to push, push. And now the repository is updated and uh, all our progress has been saved. So if any case, everything, anything goes wrong or I completely ruined the code, what I can do now is go to version control, go down to, uh, let's see, log on head, created a context, rendered, and I can now say reset current branch to here, hard, and boom, it just removes everything. It goes back straight to where we were. And uh, that's really cool. So again, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you liked it. And uh, if you learned a lot, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.